Using tracks on stage doesn't mean you have to stick to the arrangement or that you're not able to flow in the middle of a song. In this video, I wanna share three ways you can flow while using tracks and still have spontaneity and flexibility. Now, in order to make this happen, here's what I have set up for this video. I have one of my favorite MIDI controllers. This is the Oakboard Slide Duo, and I have mapped primarily play, stop, previous, and next. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other mappings I have in just a moment. Uh, and these are mapped to specific things in Ableton Live. Let me show you what they are, and then we'll dive in and I'll show you some of these demos. So if I go to Command M, go to MIDI mapping, uh, play is mapped to play, stop is mapped to stop, uh, previous is mapped to previous locator, and next is mapped to next locator. Now, one of the big lies that I hear from a lot of people that are new to running tracks is they think in order to have freedom and flexibility uh, with tracks, they have to use session view. And they typically go, oh, I can use session view. I can chop things up into sections. I can uh, create follow actions. Maybe I can use a plugin uh, to automatically follow. And they get super excited and, and, and start nerding out over all these very specific things. In arrangement view, all I have to do is load my content in and add locators. So really in less than 10 seconds, I can have far more flexibility in a way that's way more simple than session view will ever be. So let's demo this and, and let's try this out. Now, um, I'm gonna demo this out with a song. This is a worship song uh, called Battle Belongs, but this, this context applies to really anything. I know most of the subscribers that watch this channel are not uh, worship leaders necessarily, not music directors doing this in a church setting, um, but I know a lot of church folks use the term flow and they want to flow and have flexibility to tracks. So I'm gonna show it in this context, um, uh, but it, it doesn't matter what song you're using. Okay, so uh, let's start, let's press play. So we've got our click track going here. All right, we'll play this. And I'm gonna bring the volume of my tracks down just a little so that you can hear me, uh, so that I can still talk. And uh, let's do our first move here. I'm gonna press previous to repeat this intro, okay? And this intro is going to repeat for as long as I talk. Uh, if you're working with an artist that wants to like um, um, intro a new song, let's press repeat again, previous to repeat again. Uh, if you're working with an artist that wants to uh, introduce a new song, say, hey, thanks for coming. The band's walking out, you're waiting for the artist to walk on, or you're in a church setting speaking or whatever. Uh, this is a really great way to do it. Okay, so here's our song. Our song is playing. Um, so again, we'll, we'll keep this going here. Uh, we're in our verse, we'll let this roll through the verse. Um, let me show you one of my favorite things. So we talked about repeating, I hit previous, which is gonna repeat. Let's skip, let's actually skip this verse and jump to our chorus. So I'm gonna press next here. I'm gonna wait to the last measure. And then I hit next twice, and that jumps us straight to the chorus. Um, one, if you listen to that, you can hear there were no jumps. I know I brought the volume of that down, but you can hear there were no like uh, pops, clicks and pops. Uh, I tend to get that a lot when I'm in session view and uh, trying to chop up my tracks and time out transitions. When I just leave it in a range of view like this, everything works perfectly. So here's a turn. So here's maybe another example where I could hit repeat. Um, let's try that again. So we'll hit repeat. Again, really smooth transition. Uh, works really, really well. Now let's press stop for a second and let's regroup here. So what we've done so far is just simply by using uh, these two buttons, previous and next. So previous locator, next locator. I am navigating my song using just simply two buttons. Now, if you're smart and you're watching this, you may be going, yeah, but Will, um, there's no guide cues. What if I was jumping around? What if I was repeating sections with guide cues? Well, if you're interested in doing that and figuring out how to figure, uh, set that up, check out my video where I show you how to set up dynamic guide cues. Uh, it's way simpler than you think. Uh, it's helpful if you're repeating a lot, but honestly, the easiest way is just mute your cues and just repeat if, if you want the simple approach. But check out that video if you wanna dive in more to that. Um, but one of the next questions I get is, yeah, Will, that's great, but uh, if I'm repeating song sections and I've got previous and next, uh, what if I need to get from, uh, let's say an intro to like the bridge of the song? How would I do that? Well, let's see if we could do this because what I have found in um, almost 99.9% .9 of all scenarios, just again, having these two buttons, previous and next is enough for me. And I can press next fast enough in that one measure span of time to jump to any song section, right? Uh, and if that doesn't work, I'll show you a, a, a um, hack, something that we could do here in just a moment. Okay, so uh, let's start our song. Let's, uh, I said intro, so let's double press stop uh, to get back to the beginning. I'm gonna press play to start our intro. Actually, I'm gonna start our intro halfway through so that we don't have to sit and wait forever. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump us to our bridge. So if you look at this song, 
Our bridge is pretty far. Honestly, I don't know if I can make it in that amount of time, but I talk about this as a great solution, so let's try it. So let's start our intro again about halfway through here. Okay, I'm gonna wait till the last measure. Okay, there's my last measure, I think. Let's go to the bridge. Oh, I missed it. I almost missed it. I could have made it. Okay, let's try it again. Um, but you can see how quick and easy it is to jump through that. So let me actually zoom this in because I can see because I'm kind of hard to see these days in my old age. So there's a measure, verse. Right, so we made it to bridge, right? So as long as I can actually see, it's pretty easy to navigate and not difficult uh, to do. So I, I pressed um, next again on my locator to make that happen. And I had to press uh, next quite a bit to make that happen. If that's too stressful for you and you go, um, okay, well, that's that's too much. Let me show you another solution. So on my MIDI controller, I've actually uh, mapped these buttons to something else, but let's change it. I'm gonna use these two buttons here. So let's go in, and if I remember correctly, I'm not gonna show you my screen, just, just hold on one second here, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I'm gonna disable this. Hopefully I will remember to remap it. Okay, back in Ableton Live. Uh, let's say we want to go to the bridge. I know we're going to jump there. I'm going to click on the bridge. I'm going to click on one of these three buttons on my uh, controller here and map that to this. Now, if you've got a MIDI control with more buttons than the Oakboard Slide Duo, um, that's great. That'll work really well in this scenario. Again, for me, I'm okay with previous next because it's real simple. But let me show you that process again. Uh, let's get out of this command M. Let me show you this process again. Let's double press stop to, to get us to the beginning. Um, and uh, show you what this would look like with that particular setup. So let's press play. Actually, I wanna jump, let's jump ahead here. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till this last measure. We're in our last measure. So I'm gonna just press this button to go to bridge. And just like that, I jumped to the bridge, right? All I had to do in this scenario is just press this button and it jumps specifically to that section. So if you know where you wanna go, you know you're gonna go to a uh, specific section, then that's a real kind of neat hack that's fun. Okay, let me show you one of my other favorite things, particularly if you're in the church world, uh, you're really gonna uh, dig this. So what happens a lot of times is we get to the end of a song. Uh, again, this happens a lot in the church world, but this could be working with an artist, whatever, you know, whatever scenario, but anyway, here we go. So we're gonna play this, we're gonna get to the end, okay? And my song ends, and I've set up this loop at the end. And the way I'm doing this loop at the end is I've set up uh, using the IEC driver what I call a repeat track. If you wanna see that tutorial, click the link in the description of this video, I show you step-by-step -step how to set up the IEC driver and set up a repeat track. So essentially what I've done here is set up a repeat track that just at the end of my song is just looping, okay? And let's say, um, let's say at the end of my song, uh, I want to get out of that loop and I want to go to, I don't know, our last course, right? This is something I typically see happen in a church scenario where uh, people think they can't repeat, so they wait to the end, they stop the click, and they go into the chorus, but because they're not using tracks, it feels really kind of lame, right? Um, here's how we're gonna do this. So let me show you just my screen. I'm gonna MIDI map, because I stole one of my buttons before, um, and let's go into loop, and that stopped because I went into MIDI map, so just bear with me for a second here. Uh, let's go in and let's MIDI map this, and then let's make sure we delete it from our previous mapping. Okay, boom. All right, so let's get our loop going again here. Now, what I mapped, again, uh, to kind of uh, model my repeat track here is I uh, mapped the on-off button for that loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out of this loop. Um, I know that we wanna stop at some point, so I'm gonna get out of this loop and I'm just gonna get us back to our course. And if you had to guess how I'm gonna get us to our course, I'm just gonna press previous to get back there, okay? So we're in it. I get the cue, this is the last time, so I'm gonna disable that and I'm gonna jump us back to our chorus just like that, all right? So you can see really simply without being stressed, let's press stop, uh, really simply without being stressed, all I had to do was disable that loop and just press previous to go back. Again, as a reminder, if that's too many presses to get uh, you know, back to a previous section, map to that specific individual section, which is really, really cool. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show you one final thing here that's really, really cool. Um, what if you want to flow? What if you wanna have the flexibility to do a song with tracks, but do it at any tempo? And, and I've worked with a few artists before that um, cannot be bound by the bounds of constant tempo. And so they wanna start a song, maybe on pad, maybe with acoustic, um, and start doing the song at any tempo, but they still wanna have click and tracks. This is still completely possible. And I wanna show you how to do that in just a moment. But before I do, I wanna ask you to consider subscribing to this channel. It's completely free. 
every single day at 10 a.m. Central, I show you tips and tricks like this for free on how to perform on stage with Ableton Live. We don't talk a whole lot about using Ableton in the studio or producing music, but if you wanna perform on stage with Ableton Live and do it in a way that uh, gives you freedom, flexibility, that's stable and efficient, this is the place. So hit subscribe, enable the bell icon uh, so you know exactly when the content goes live. Okay, so let's talk about our final scenario here. Um, there's so much more we could talk about, but um, let's say we're working with an artist that again, uh, wants to maybe just start a song at any tempo and then wants the tracks to follow that tempo. This is super easy to do in Ableton Live. I'm gonna hit Command M. Uh, again, I want to delete this MIDI mapping. Actually, we'll leave that MIDI mapping, that's fine. We don't need it for this one. I'm gonna go up here to the Tap Tempo button and I'm going to MIDI Map Tap, okay? I actually am gonna delete this because I wanna show you uh, one of my favorite things that most people don't know about. This button right here, I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna map this as well too. Let me make sure I didn't map them to the same thing. Okay, I think that's good. E3, I did map them to the same thing. Okay, so let's make this one that. Let's make this one that. Okay, make sure we're good. Okay, uh, this is kind of a bonus thing. I didn't plan on this, but this one's gonna be pretty fun to show you. Okay, so um, let's say we wanna do, uh, we wanna do this song. We wanna do it at whatever tempo. The artist kind of starts to, uh, to vamp, they're playing their song, they're playing this at whatever tempo they want to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them play and establish a tempo, um, and then we're gonna have like a, a count off, right, with the band where maybe we diamond. Um, let's say we actually wait a, a measure instead of two measures in this case. So I'm gonna add a locator here. We're gonna start us right here, okay? So I'm gonna select that locator. I'm gonna use my tap tempo button, which on my MIDI controller is this one. And I'm gonna wait for the artist to, to um, you know, do their song, establish a, a good tempo. This song's at 81 originally. Um, so again, as they play, they get settled in. Uh, then we wait for the, the kind of where the band's gonna dime in, tempo is is, uh, is constant. Then we're just gonna go, and I'm gonna pick a tempo, who knows what's gonna come out. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we're at 67 BPM, so super, super slow, right? But what's cool is my click is playing along, my tracks are playing along, and I could even in real time, if we wanna kinda of start to speed this up. All right, you may hear some pops because we're speeding this up in real time, but let's see if we can get it close to 81. Okay, we're getting a little closer. All right, now it's starting to get kind of weird, but we can adjust our tempo in real time, which is kind of cool, um, and uh, and do some really fun stuff, which is great. Now, let me show you the really cool thing about this. Let's get this back. What was our tempo? 81 BPM, I, th I think was our tempo. Okay, so we could play this, played our original tempo. Let's say we get to the end of the song, and uh, I've worked with people before that, um, that do this and uh, wanna have flexibility to do this. Watch how easy this is. I assigned this button up here. It's called Tempo Nudge Down. Uh, I'm gonna press play here. I'm gonna hold this button to, okay, and I don't know if you could tell what happened there, but while I'm holding that button down, essentially what's happening is it is automatically slowing my song down for as long as I hold that button. Okay, so what's cool about that is again, all I had to do is hold down this button, which is uh, tempo nudge down, which basically is like a temporary retard of the song. So we slowly slow down. Uh, this is super helpful if you're working again with the artist that at the end of a song wants to retard. You just press that button, it's gonna slowly kind of retard. The, the click is gonna slow down, tracks are gonna slow down. Uh, and it's super, super fun. So uh, those are just a couple ways that you can flow tracks through ways, um, but they're all really, really simple, right? So you set up your MIDI controller, Make the MIDI assignments that you want to. Choose the things you want to assign. Um, I think most of us probably are not going to be tapping a, a tempo and then starting the song, but you can do that. The, the point of showing you all this and the point of doing all this is to show you you don't have to be restricted when you're using uh, click and tracks if you're using Ableton Live. And if you want to get a head start on using Ableton Live in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable, then head to fromstudiotosage.com slash template and download my free track template. You're going to be able to format in your songs using that template to look like this, to again, give you the ability to jump around, to save your tempo, to save your locators with your set uh, so that you can really quickly and easily use Ableton Live again in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.